first thing you'll learn about your baby's behaviour at night is that she rarely sleeps the way you do. On average, she needs about 13 to 14 hours a day. But as this is only an average, you may well be disappointed. At first, she won't fall into your patterns because she won't know the difference between night and day. You may find that during the day your baby spends much of her time in her pram or car seat so that all her sleeping is done on the move. Fortunately, most babies are very adaptable and will willingly fit in with your routine most of the time. A sling can be useful if you just want to walk and take your baby with you. Babies like movement and there is nothing more suited to them than the movement of their mother's body. Two traps people tend to fall into oversleep. One is never giving babies a chance to learn to go to sleep by and for themselves. It's very natural at the beginning of a baby's life to nurse him to sleep, to rock him to sleep, to walk him to sleep, and it's very nice for both of you. You slip him into his crib soundly off and you know you've got somewhere between 20 minutes and two hours before he'll need you again. But if that always happens and your baby never gets the chance to discover that he can actually go from being awake to being asleep without you doing it to him, then you may get problems with waking in the night. Every time the baby surfaces, he's got to cry for you to come and put him back to sleep. It was quite hard adjusting to sort of getting up so much during the night and being continually on demand. Um, but amazingly, your body actually gets used to doing such irregular hours and um, so little sleep. So I think you cope quite well because you're doing it for your baby and you just automatically do it. And I think during the night when you go to sleep, I'm sort of half, a, half awake. You go and help your baby in whatever they want and then you go back to sleep. It was quite easy to turn on and off. Yeah, I was just screaming most of the time and, you know, stopping us sleeping. We sort of thinking, oh God, I just want some sleep. <laughs> but once he started sleeping through the night, that was a real breakthrough because we could get, we could actually get rested and feel less tired and you could cope so much better. A newborn baby can sleep anywhere, even in a suitably lined drawer, but pillows can be dangerous. It's better to put him on his back to sleep and not to overwrap him and to avoid smoky atmospheres. Some parents prefer to have their babies near them for the first few weeks or months. There's no harm in having your baby sleeping with you provided you haven't been drinking or taking any drugs and he isn't ill or likely to run a fever. This can reassure both you and your baby as you'll be able to hear each other's breathing. It's only a very small part of the world that would dream of leaving a baby to go to sleep by itself. I mean, in most of the world, babies sleep in a huddle of bodies. They sleep with their mothers or with their brothers and sisters or whatever. And that's absolutely fine, unless at nine months or a year, you suddenly realize that your sex life is suffering or that you're sick to death of being kicked in the night or that you now want to tail off breastfeeding and this nine-month baby is helping herself in the night. If at that point you suddenly think, yikes, it's time she went into her own bed in her own room, you are liable very much to hurt her feelings. So what I'm saying about this business of trying to have foresight is trying not just to live for the moment, but to realize that things are going to change and maybe try to keep both options open.